Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast, the show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take on various topics that tend to cross one's path, happen, occur, uh, reveal themselves when one goes on this endeavor of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I am a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host, the other host is... <laughs> <laughs> I have no direction where I am relative to you in the video, but uh, hey, I'm Rob Stenzinger, and well, I'm an interactive storyteller and a user experience design coach. Good to see you again, Rob. Good to see you, Jersey. It's fun to do this. Uh, we took a week off, right? And uh, as we do, sometimes we do a rebroadcast, which, um, you know, it, it allows for a lot of different things. And... Uh, yeah, always always love to hear folks' reactions to to those topics. That um, you know, there there's a lot. I think you know. I, I, am I kidding myself? If you know that there's some evergreenness to uh, to some of our approach to how we we talk about stuff. I don't know. Would love to hear from folks about that. Hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, that the feedback I'd like to hear too. And you know, we, we always blast out the ways to contact us at the end of the show, but it's leanintoart at gmail.com if you want to email us. Or also on leanintoart.com, there's a contact us link there as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the format of the show, if you're new to it, is we tip, we're we both, as we announced, visual storytellers, and we pick a topic related to our exploration in visual storytelling, and then, you know, in the first half of the show, take a look at what it looks like when we're doing it, and the second half, how we think about it, and then we have this, we close with this little tiny segment called the two-minute practice, where we challenge ourselves to just practice something inexpensively, inexpensive with regard to time, um, every, every week. And uh, this week, we're going to be talking about open broadcasting software OBS right <laughs> yeah it's um i know it's one of those things that uh as soon as you get into putting out any kind of stream you're going to stumble into a variety of of the big solutions and OBS is it, it's really out there i mean it's Maybe you notice it if you consume streams as well, but it's probably not as important to really notice that kind of thing. Like, do people really care when someone posts an image of a comic and it was in Photoshop or Illustrator <laughs> or, you know, yeah. um, of course, uh, Clip Studio Paint, et cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then all of a sudden, well, um, you, I, I, I think we went through a few stages of this whole uh, learning process of sort of, um, I think you you went in deeper at first and uh, got us set up pretty well to do some stream Twitch. And, uh, but, I, uh, but here we are uh, digging deeper again to, to understand something that's a pretty darn, um, it's an expansive, flexible tool. And I, I'm, I'm just getting to appreciate the, the depth of this thing. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll have some fun sharing stuff we've learned so far. I mean, I look at this as like, I, I haven't, I don't know if I'm even ready. Like I don't, I wouldn't probably teach a workshop yet on OBS, right? Same. But yeah, learning, learning, figuring some stuff out. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's a timely topic for a variety of reasons as we'll explore. But a big one is, is that, yeah, a lot of us, because of the situation we're in with the global pandemic, a lot of us are switching to doing all sorts of video content wherever we can, right? Um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, full disclosure, I am, am uh, organizer of a couple different comics festivals now. I'm the programming coordinator at the Ann Arbor Comic Arts Festival, but then I'm the um, interim executive director of Cartoon Crossroads Columbus. So this is something that we're thinking about a lot, too, with like regards to like how like with A2CAF being canceled this year, we're going to be switching to uh, doing some virtual stuff. So absolutely. Uh, and uh I, yeah, so the, yeah, the, a lot of different things driving that. So I, I think a lot of us are, are are attending more of these events, and you know, you look at um, the stages of the experience and how how that's um, you know what's it like consuming things and whatnot, and you know, pretty quickly you end up getting into um, I think the big ecosystem stuff with which we've been thinking about as far as um, the. The, the journey of someone attending a virtual event and all that and and some concerns about putting them putting them together and that's been a, a topic of late but like um, the the mechanics of actually performing it and streaming and stuff and the capabilities like OBS and it, the, those let's see I guess what's the classification of, of app 
I mean, it's a, it, it's almost like a TV studio in an app. It kind of is. It kind of is. It's, I mean, it's, it's like, uh, what do they call those? Like the, the technical switcher, technical director desk. I, I took television production in high school and I remember like that was one of the jobs, which was being the dude who, or, or gal or whomever who switches between the different cameras, camera one, camera two, you know, pot up this, this sound, pot down that sound, that kind of thing. Um, mm. So it's the same kind of idea, right? So yeah. Yeah. Switch right that was a good class. I, I took that. Well, TV tech, it was called in my school. And, uh, oh, wow. even, uh, remember when, so when cable television spread, there was, a, they had to make a lot of deals with the local, um, local, um, you know, uh, local cities and whatnot that they would allow public access. Right. So I never quite got to the, you know, discipline to put out a public access show, but I was studying that too. I took their free classes. So you could go and, and check out from, from the, the, uh, cable station, uh, a camera set and stuff. And, uh, that was, that was, yeah. uh, um, fun to play with. Right. And, but here we are, it's, I mean, think about the hoops that you, you were involved with that. Right. So there's essentially one stream that you could get into the programming schedule. If you produced a show that was showable <laughs> and all that anyway, fun times. We, you know, technology <laughs> changes the, changes the, the options for all of us, um, quite a bit. Yep. So, okay, well, let's dive into it. Uh, I got to hit some music to get us over to the, the first part of the show. We always do like a little musical thing just to indicate to people who are listening to the podcast that we're changing gears, our past introductions, heading into talking about the thing. I don't think you can see it on the screen, Rob, but... Um, you Speaking of OBS and testing things... Um, I'm playing with uh, the Skype NDI plugin to like feed our videos in to separate channels, and your video mm -hmm. keeps changing size constantly. <laughs> I have to keep adjusting it, so everybody's seeing me do it. But uh, oh, funny. there we go, there we go, and it's going to change size again in a few minutes. Why would it do it. that? I think it might be something to do with my my machine and the way it's processing the NDI signal. But you know, Wait on the job so, training. Okay. To NDI signal. Let's unpack this for a second. Yeah. So, um, what's functioning right now you, is, let's see. So, I'm on Skype and you're on Skype, but mm -hmm. then you have something that's actually able to take two video feeds out of Skype? Yeah. And, yeah. and what's NDI? The NDI plugin. I forget what it stands for. Um, I, I forget. It, it's an acronym. It's from a, a company called New Tech, and it's this plugin for OBS, and it's it's built into Skype. You can actually turn it on in your Skype settings, um, in your calling advanced settings. And what it does is it like separates out the the two video and audio feeds into separate channels that OBS can then read as separate inputs. So then I can like have each of those as a, an NDI input you know, feed that, that mm -hmm. put an overlay over top. And now we got a two up just like we're on CNN or something. So we start yelling at each other if we want to, but, <laughs> so, but, but for some, for some reason, <laughs> yeah, I know I, I looked it up quick though. N yeah. NDI by the way mm -hmm. is network device interface. Okay. And so it's a standard that was put out by new tech, like you mentioned to enable video compatible products to communicate. So, right. So it, it's, 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 it's an interesting, it's an interesting technology because not only does it allow us to be, feed into clear Skype feed. So I don't have to just do like a screen grab of Skype, which I don't think it lets you do anymore. Um, but you can also like connect, you know, devices like old iPhones as NDI devices as separate cameras and things like that, which is another thing we're playing with, which maybe we can talk about. Uh, we're in it now. We're in the episode and your video has not changed size. So I will stop messing with it. And uh, <laughs> where do you want to start uh, but, with? Go, go. Okay. Well, I, I just I thought that was pretty natural and interesting how, um, you know, like like dis describing the the this how the setup is functioning right this second, mm -hmm. um, but like we started talking about the the background as far as we we had a path that has led us to Twitch, and uh, I mean honestly we've had sort of a two, typically two person talking head show for about nine years now, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and so we started streaming with what was that Adobe's um, Connect or something like that? Adobe Connect, yeah. Uh it had great features, met our needs pretty well. But then um, some 
something led us to go to Hangouts. I think it was because we could stream live on right. YouTube. Yeah, we started out with Adobe Connect and it let us do like the two up, you know, recording, but then there was like a video processing and then an uploading to YouTube after that. And then when Hangouts on Air came out, I got excited because I thought, well, this lets you do like the scene switching. You could do overlays. You could do all the things that like we're going to talk about that OBS does. It's it was mm -hmm. a little bare bones. It was a little basic, but it was all done in the browser. All the encoding, the recording, and the streaming was all done in the browser. There was no software to download. Very exciting. Uh, and then you know the the idea at the time, as I remember, the argument I made is that like, well, you know, live streaming means that people can interact with us if they want to while we're doing the show. Um, mm -hmm. And then afterwards, like once we hit stop on the show, there's a YouTube video of what we just did, right? Very clean, very, mm -hmm. you know, easy and tidy, efficient. Uh, then Hangouts went away. And, you know, it's like, okay, uh, what are we going to do now? We've, we've, got, we've been doing this for a long time this way. Do we want to continue doing it this way? We talked about, do you want to do an audio only show? Well, what, what are our options? And so we quickly started doing some research. And I think you said... We should go to Twitch. We should try streaming on Twitch for a while to see if there's any audience to be found there. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I don't know how to do that. So I started looking up videos on like <laughs> how to stream to Twitch. And that's when I came across OBS. So, you know, um, you well, also what's funny is, is you, you, you got to set up, you replicated the, the old setup um, with a little, well, with some refinement fairly quickly. Um, and, and that's uh, where, where, uh, that was really impressive. I thought, oh, wow, um, this is another one of those precipice things where um, I don't know. I didn't really dive in and embrace it until recently where it's like there's a lot. I see so much reason and I desire to adapt and evolve how, like how I'm approaching this kind of stuff because of, um, well, recording video workshops and and then like OBS can help with that. And it can help with lean to art, and you know, all, I'm like, well, okay. There's more justification to jump in this into this tool, and which I honestly I found a little intimidating. Where you know, once I got, uh, I did my first test stream for Guitar Fredder's birthday last year, and I was like, okay, it works, and I don't want to break it, and I'm just, I don't want to dive into it. It's funny because I love learning new stuff, but. You know, I just was kind of at capacity as far as how I how I looked at it, right? But I don't know. Hopefully, like one thing we can accomplish is we're sharing a, um, a little bit of our processing in in using this more. Is that I don't know. I guess it's not that it's not that scary, which is I feel silly saying that. Um, but but you know, um, okay. So where 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 do we want to go with the story? We've got. Um, Kind of well, like why we ended up here, and and here we are, and we're, we're embracing it, and we're we're trying to level up more, right? So, mm -hmm. what about um, yeah, your 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 so, thoughts? Like like when you first first came into this, like what were you trying to accomplish? Yeah, um, we can go through besides that and just the basics. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an extra challenge, Rob, because like yeah. the the video feed from you is getting really really low band like low. Uh, low resolution and the audio quality is diminishing. Okay. So I wonder if you could look into what's going on with your bandwidth or see if it's mine. Why, and while you yeah. do that, listen to my story <laughs> okay. and respond to it thoughtfully. <laughs> Which that's an interesting thing to mention. So I've already like, so you have local processes running on your machine, maybe file stuff, whatever. I've already um, shut down those processes and mm -hmm. Now my my guess is it's bandwidth consumption in the household because we're all quarantined in the household. So now I will run off and be right back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so while Rob does that, I will explore what I what were, what were my early goals with with switching to OBS and to continue on with the live streaming. You know, so something that I got hooked on. Um, very early on with using Hangouts is because because Hangouts was streaming live and because you had a finished YouTube video exported at the end, um, it really was inviting us to do a show in one take without a whole lot of editing if we can avoid it, right? Like, for instance, right now, like the fact that Rob is gone and I'm continuing on talking to everybody um, just to keep, keep the flow and the momentum of the show going, which is like, that, that's a fun skill to to kind of process, like, how to keep, I mean, it's like, it's similar to doing like a live event, right? Like you can't edit a live event in person in a place, you know, feels more natural, I guess. So 
that that idea of doing a one take show uh, continued on to using OBS because with OBS we could do a local recording. We don't ha- we could stream it live, but we could still do a local recording. And I could do some editing afterward. But you know there were some other constraints at work while I was learning OBS for the first time. Okay, one so we were switching off of Hangouts and I had a, a time crunch on my hand. We had to like keep producing a weekly or biweekly show at the time. Um, I was also getting myself off of the Macintosh because I had just gotten a new Windows machine. I was switching to Windows. Uh, I had, I didn't intend on replacing my old Mac. So I'm learning a new operating system and learning how to like work out the audio rigging that we used to do. Cause I also like do a lot of like uh, filtering my desktop audio and your audio, my audio into different channels so I can record it effectively and, you know, do like those mm-hmm. little sound stingers like we did. Um, so, Time crunch, learning new operating system, uh, and the thought of adding video editing to this 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 chain of learning was just too much. I'm like, nope, I'm gonna have to learn how to keep the, doing this all in one take and look for as much efficiency as I possibly could. Right. So, what's the bare minimum that I could pull off? And and that meant that I was going to have to be okay with. Well, we both got to be okay with the idea of leveling up is going to happen very slowly and incrementally. Right. Um, like even like what we're doing right now. Gosh, your video looks fantastic, Rob. <laughs> it looks really. Oh, really? Good. Yeah. It looks okay. Really better. <laughs> so. Hmm. <laughs> it. Well, you know. It. Thanks for thanks for um, uh, taking care of my my brief absence, because uh, uh, yeah, well, I heard you talking about the 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 challenge of making a one take show and also migrating platforms, which. Uh, that's which honestly, I found that pretty great too. That OBS is is very good at being a cross platform solution. Mm-hmm. Um, I've 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 been able to benefit by experimenting both on my Mac and my Windows machine, and seeing, you know, some trade offs where mm-hmm. I I have a hunch. I don't know for sure, but so my impression is that the that the Windows version uses some some more. Um, uh, more capable operating system provided APIs like DirectX type stuff versus uh, uh, the Mac is using, I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, wrong. part of one, of one of my motivations for us sharing this, even though like we're, we're still along our learning journey for this stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess we always are, right? But, but again, this is like pre-learning enough to put on a workshop kind of thing. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I could be wrong with this. But, and I think it's uh, OpenGL that... Is doing all the the graph the um, the presentation rendering type stuff in OBS on the Mac and okay. OpenGL isn't sort of the the um, it works well it's it's very cross platform to to go that way for rendering graphics but it's not as um, sort of core to the operating system like Apple isn't making that work as fast as and performant as other th- other ways that they provide to render okay. graphics. So Interesting. trying to be nice saying, uh, saying it in a way that uh, is open hearted to Apple's choices. <laughs> so along the way, as I'm learning these things, like learning how to use this, this, this software um, and learning like and when I had, when I, we were doing the old, the show through the hangouts and I was doing it off of my Mac and my iMac, I had this really great little uh tiny little program called Ableton um, Audio Hijack. Or not Ableton. It was uh, Audio Hijack. I forget what company made it. Was it Rogue Amoeba? Rogue Amoeba. Mm-hmm. And Audio Hijack allowed you to, like, at least the old version I had, it was like, hey, take the audio from this and put it over here. Take the audio from this and plug it into my Chrome. You know, so it was very easy to route audio together so that all we'd have to do is just open up Chrome and stream a show. Well, when I switched to Windows, I didn't have that application anymore. So I had to find a whole oh, new no. way of doing it. Yeah. So I, I, I wound up using this this program called Voice Meter, uh, Voice Meter Banana. It's a French uh, freeware or donationware program, mm. um, which is really rich and robust. It's a really cool, but it, it, it did have like a lot of, I had to watch a lot of videos and read a lot of instructions on how to get everything all rigged up. So they, that was another like friction point. That made me say, like, okay, I'm only going to be able to learn so much at a time on this. I'm, I'm, I've got to get us to the bare minimum of just being able to produce the show the way we had been doing it. But then, in, as I'm consuming more and more videos on using OBS to do live streaming, I'm finding about, about stingers, about overlays, about alerts, and things like this. And I'm like, okay, 
these are things I need to learn how to make. But now I'm on Windows. I no longer have. I I had um, Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, and a handful of other programs that I bought with my own money, like 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 a gentleman. Um, it, <laughs> but I didn't have them on Windows. I didn't have a license for Windows, and I wasn't about to subscribe to a subscription model. I'm like, well, this is a good opportunity for me to like figure out how to live outside of the Adobe ecosystem. So now I got to learn about video production or like graphics, like motion graphics production in the world of open source and freeware. So I started looking into programs like Olive. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this one, Rob. Uh, I think I've I heard you mention it, but uh, I haven't quite. Uh, dove into that one yet it's it's a free it's a free uh iMovie like video editing program um and it's not it's not bad but it's just that you know i'm i'm also dealing with a computer that like if i want to process a two-hour video it's going to take a long time and then another mm -hmm. one which is really interesting is called natron which is more of like um a, a motion graphics piece of software and i'll pull it up on screen um, it has a really interesting interface and an interesting way of thinking about creating motion graphics. So uh, I started messing around with that too. But I only got so far because like, this is something where I'm learning very slowly, incrementally, and with very, very like, little tiny snippets of borrowed time. So that's why we don't have like Lena Tart like, flashes across the screen with the Lena Tart person zooming by while we switch scenes or anything like that. That's something I'm working towards slowly, but it's, it's happening very slowly. <laughs> Um, there's, there's also like sites where you can purchase packs of themed kits to like install in your OBS. Nerd or Die is a big one where you can download like all sorts of different like transitions and alerts and things like that. But, you know, ideally you want it to be something that matches the project that you're working on. So. Which, uh, I find that that's actually going to be quite doable. There's, um, uh, there's an app that, that I've, I've come across because I've been working to, uh, well, my big motivation has, is this interweaving of uh, trying to be able to have more flexibility to do rich live switching with no editing, right, for lean into art, but then also for, for online workshops, right? Mm -hmm. And like if I'm presenting at virtual events and that kind of thing, which, uh, which is coming up, but if I'm presenting live or if I'm presenting pre-recorded, right? which I have an event coming up where it's a hybrid. And um, so I actually was just using OBS, not for streaming in this case, but to, to just do a local recording and yeah. to be able to switch from a presenter view and to a presenter plus slides and also just slides and back and forth. And if you're able to do that in a way that is, um, that's natural, it's actually much more interesting video. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's, it's like you can, you can be engaged with, yes, I know I'd like, however you distribute in information and whatnot, it's like, uh, uh, like webinars that are very slide driven with a voice in the background and whatnot. It can be fine. Um, but I'm looking to, to do things that, uh, well, like, like workshops, I try to provide experiences that, that meet people, um, who are visual learners, who are audio learners, who are hands-on learners, who, um, just try to have a variety of experiences, experiences as I'm sharing something. And so that we're, like, we're all connecting on, uh, in, in more ways than, than just a passive broadcast. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, so it's, it's actually pretty powerful for that. Like you could just record yourself presenting with OBS. Yeah. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Um, the the Seriously Coalition that I work with on that Captain Seriously comic book, they had me record a 45-minute like sort of talk about the making of the comic. And I recorded it entirely on OBS and did like scene switching to different slides and different like, um, you know, uh, what do they call those? Like It's like a gallery view where it, uh, where it just rotates through a whole bunch of images automatically and things like that. Um, oh, really? You, did, you had OBS do that? Yeah. Yeah, so it was just like basically webcam on me, and then I had a slide deck pulled up, and I had a couple different image galleries pulled up, and I had my soundboard so I could play like some intro music, and then yeah, I did it all in one take, you know. And then now I've got like a decent Gosh. video. I can oh, pull it up. Image gallery. I know you're looking this up, but and I'm curious. The image gallery used was powered by OBS, not some other app that you were capturing with OBS. Correct. Wow. Okay. So. 
Huh. And actually, I used, I used it on our episode with Jen Vaughn a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the Very Very Shopping Network. I just like you just create an image gallery um, in your there's in OBS. You have you know we don't have to go through like all the ABCs of it, but you have scenes which are like a collection of like right now that this if I were to describe the scene that everybody's looking at on the screen, the scene consists of my video feed, Rob's video feed, and then the little frame that you see around us with all the logos and stuff. That's the scene, mm -hmm. but that scene is composed of those elements, right? So like you create a new scene call it gallery you add the element which is the gallery itself and then you just feed in like put in these 20 images and you can set for how long you want those images to rotate and it'll automatically rotate them through so wow uh that's that's pretty great um are you let's see are you pulling that up to demonstrate or oh no? the gallery i could do it right now so do you want me just to like screen screen share it uh yeah sure why not I can give it a try. So um, let's see. I can do OBS capture. And so now you can see, here's my setup. And here's actually the soundboard that I use for the show. And I just all I do is just hit the button. And then it plays. And it's got a little fade <laughs> on it. And then it fades out. So that's what I'm using whenever I'm playing the sounds on the show. And then down here in OBS is, this is where you add your scene. And then um, the source is what feeds into that scene. Right. So mm -hmm. actually, I'm not going to be able to show you um, me showing what the rotating gallery looks like. Uh, oh, that's OK. Office. I mean, we can conceptualize it or whatnot, but it's just one of those other scene elements right there in, in OBS. Yeah. And when you're controlling the live show, are you using OBS to click between the scenes? Yeah, I as, know that you've been your... experimenting with a different thing. Yes, I'm actually, I have two screens. I have a second monitor and I'm scooting. I put OBS in the second monitor and then I can like just click on the scenes area to switch between all the different things. That's pretty great. Um, I found that difficult when with live performing. Mm -hmm. I And I saw, I've seen your, your that video you you did and, and uh, for, for oh. the Seriously Coalition and it's really slick. And you are an octopus as far as how you're able to, to do that. And it's, it, it's impressive. The juggling the performance and the technical direction is, uh, I've, that's, that's quite a skill. I would like to get skilled up with that, but I'm looking for like some affordances to try to make that easier. Mm -hmm. So of course there's things like stream decks and whatnot. And you know, you, I don't know if there's more than one brand, but you, you know, there's like these cool essentially dedicated keyboards with but, you know, rows of buttons that are physical buttons to switch between scenes and stuff. And I didn't really want to, you know, make the plunge to go into that yet. Thinking I have touch surfaces all over the place. You know, there's got to be a way to like for this open source app to be controlled from some other app on a different uh, touch surface device. And turns out there is. And uh, the one I ended up um, really diving into uh, I know there's others out there, but it's called Up Deck, and it's really, really a, a very flexible tool. Um, it's one of those things where it's got a few pieces and parts that, if you're um, really new to, I guess, uh, if if you're not really, I, I don't know, I, I felt really comfortable stumbling through and figuring it out because. Um, I kind of can conceptualize it, how they're trying to do this, right? They have a piece of software running on uh, your desktop that connects to OBS through a script. You, you load into OBS and then, uh, and those, that app, uh, that the, the up deck app talk to the up deck, uh, or other device, your, your, um, windows or Android tablet, um, Android phone, iOS, all that stuff. So it's really cross-platform, very uh, promising. But as I'm connecting these, these different pieces and parts, I'm noticing, oh, hey, wait a minute. OBS can load scripts. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm also an, a, a coder, an engineer. I, I have built lots of different things in software. And I find that very enabling when apps open up some kind of you know, method to automate their, their behaviors. And all of a sudden, as I'm digging, like UpDeck provides, in a way, like a, a smooth, like an easier interface to 
to, to sort of script and add behaviors to OBS um, because it's like they've done all the hard work of learning OBS's um, interface API, right? And, uh, and, and like just they provide the way because they're like, here's a script. And so for me, that's gold. I'm, I'm just like, this is a text file that's an example of a bunch of code to make OBS behave in a bunch of different ways with animations and, and um, uh, toggles and uh, sound and faders and all that stuff. So like your whole soundboard could be running uh, through OBS and controlled through one stream deck interface kind of thing that's running in up deck. Yeah. That's so it's kind of by points away just by studying one to also all of a sudden it's like a thread to pull on to to see like so much more possibility with this with this thing. Yeah. And yeah, so those animations and things you were talking about are you know, we could we could take static assets and we don't have to build like a, a pre canned video that gets overlaid on on the other video. I mean we we can have essentially scripts do the animation and stuff. Oh wow. Yeah. Interesting. Um, anyway, yeah. We'll have to talk more about that. Cause yeah, that's one of those things where I ran into a wall as far as like leveling up speed. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to just deal with that later. Cause I don't have, I don't have the space or the bandwidth right now to attend to it fully. Um, very interesting. Uh, yeah. And I've seen, I've seen those decks too. They may also make physical ones. They make physical actual like, uh, switching boards for OBS that some streamers use. And then I've also seen that there's apps for phones that like, you know, basically pulls up like a, a screen of little tiles that you can tap on to switch between screens. Right. And effectively that's what up deck becomes. Okay. You configure it, you launch the, you launch the app on your desktop. It becomes this tiny window and then you click on the tiny window and then it launches a web browser interface. And now that is that's where you can sort of map out all your controls and behaviors and have buttons that are one not one time buttons buttons that are toggle buttons that essentially have two actions when they're on when it's on and when it's off and mm. mm-hmm. lots of different things um you know what does the button say in either state what's the image all this stuff uh you can control it's pretty it's pretty powerful it's it's um it's it's kind of bare bones right and it's a it's a bit of um like you described your process in learning um, aspects of this, a, you know, a bit of checking out the documentation, but, um, but it's pretty well documented. And as long as you have some idea with, you know, where you want to go and I'd recommend starting with, you know, something that's just um, not too complicated, switching scenes mm-hmm. and then, uh, then build up from there. So when I was doing my presentations recorded in OBS, um, I was pulling up some PDF presentation files, slide decks. And Mm. what I was doing, I was just like scrolling through them. I was just flicking the pages up to pull up the pages. I imagine you don't want to do that with yours when you're getting paid to do a presentation for a festival. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. um, Well, either way, I guess the deck itself, that, that can have some some energy if you're like flipping quickly or or moving really slow or whatever that like almost the how you're interacting with with the deck adds it, it's part of your performance but for me i actually wanted to uh because well, what's funny is is i was trying to create a setup that would work both for me recording something and actually um yeah, my my wife kate shield stenzinger also landed a speaking gig recently and it needed to record something for a virtual conference and so I thought, great, even more incentive to invest in figuring this out. And so uh, I, I wanted to use my, the, my little uh, clicker, my pre um, slide changer that is uh, the Logitech R400. And uh, it's, it's just nice to have something that fits in your hand and, and lets you go back and forward through the slides. Um, so what that means is, I well, I really wanted a convenient way to interact with the you know one of part of the presentation materials and the capture of the performance itself. So the combination of this this clicker plus up deck was working pretty good. Um, I still didn't get the I didn't master the performance and the clicking. <laughs> you know, I don't know why. I just didn't. I thought, gosh, this is not as 
smooth as the presentation I saw Jersey give. So I am going to uh, enlist help. So what's funny is when I performed my um, performance, Kate actually ran the technical um, switching for my presentation for performance, and I did the same for hers. And so you had this interesting, pretty easy to collaborate situation, right? You just hand the uh, a tablet or whatever device to someone. They can pull up your custom deck on their own device if they want, because it's in the uh, up deck it lets you do that. Mm. Anyway, it's uh, yeah, it's just really flexible. So that let me really be in the moment, do the performance, get all the recording done in that interesting way, and uh, that uh, and I, and it wasn't, it didn't have those sort of awkward pauses of like making a point and then changing the scene. <laughs> and clicking a slide <laughs> yeah. and clicking too many slides. And, you know, that little yeah. bit of juggling is not trivial to me. It's not. It's not. And if, if you've ever watched Scott McCloud perform, like he has his slides timed literally to like the quarter second. You know, he, he does he does slide transitions that in the transition of the slides, it helps make the point that he's making mid sentence. And it's timed so precisely. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, there's this there's this moment where he says, like, we're all seeing animals. And like in between two slides is like just like a quick he like sit, sits on it for literally like a half a second. It's just like a shot of monkey's eyes, you know, like a like a close up of like a, a chimp's eye, like eyebrows and eyes. Right. So he's like, we're seeing animals. And as he says, seeing that flashes, then he goes to the next slide. Right. Like it's like that kind of thing. Um, and I, wow. I've done enough presentations with one of those clickers and they are very nice to use. But um that kind of timing is, is tough, you know? Mm -hmm. Because there's, there's parallel uh, timing paths going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, so something to think of. And honestly, that's incentive too. I mean, if you're like, if you're really into the idea of the one person band where you have, you know, uh, symbols in, in under your arms. So you do the chicken wing and, and an accordion, accordion in your hands yeah. while, you know, et cetera. Um, it's pretty great. <laughs> But if, mm -hmm. if you're, yeah, if you're, if you want to do the one instrument thing at a time, it's, um, yeah. So it's, it, I mentioned it because it's challenging, but it also it, then it, it's, you can offload that. Someone can be a technical director depending on your production size. Yeah. Um, do you want to take a break and then we can come back and talk about some of the other things you discovered along the way? Cause you've had some other pretty cool things that you've unlocked about uh, for yourself about OBS that is probably going to change the Linux heart cast going forward too. I imagine. I, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. So okay. yeah, sounds great. Let's do that. Okay. So in about a minute and a half, we're going to come back and talk about more of Rob's journey and some, think a little bit more abstractly about like, why would we do this leveling up in this particular software? Before we do that, we got to thank some other people who make the show possible. And those folks, those folks who support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Linux art is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you believe in Rob and Jersey and what we do on this project, you can help make it more sustainable by contributing as little as a dollar a month. You can even do a one-time contribution. You can say like, hey, here's you know, $5, $10 just to help keep the project going. Avail yourself of all the behind the scenes stuff. And then you can punch out right afterwards. You know, you can download a couple of the behind the scenes podcasts and then you know, close your account. But I want to thank five people who have been doing it on an ongoing basis. Five people who have been supporting the show regularly. First up, David Armentrout. Thank you, David, for believing in us and what we do. And Dado, D-A-D-O. You can find Dado on Twitter at Dadotronic. Thank you, Dado. And uh, Red Horvath, who you can find on Twitter at IGMHorv77. Thank, thank you, Greg. And Retro Outro, or Ashley Knapp. Thank you, Ashley, for believing us in what we could do. You can find Ashley on Twitter, at Control Alt Lee. And Jonathan Wordson. Thank you, Jonathan, for believing us in what we do. You can find them all at patreon.com slash leanintoart, where you will find all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the shows we record only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts, those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk about whatever you want in a safe place with fellow leaners. Patreon.com slash leanintoart. Thank you to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot. It really does. Thank you so much. All right. So then the other part that we do, we go to the second half.
And there we go. Okay, so <laughs> we are in the second half of the show. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit more about some of the neat things that you discovered along the way, because one of the other things that I've been playing around with, and I'm not successful yet, is um, being able to turn like an old telephone into a webcam, because one of the cases that a lot of the streaming people that I've been, you know, paying attention to and learning from point out that these Logitech webcams we use and these webcams on our computers that we use uh, have a way less high definition sensor than the webcams or rather the cameras on these telephone devices have. So if you can use these things as a webcam, you should. So that was one of the things you came across, right? Yeah, certainly. So imagine, well, trying to find a way to like, I swear I'm going to uh, get better at the live switching and all that stuff too. Uh, but but imagine that that you've got that down and you're able to switch between multiple camera angles plus different presentation materials plus um, toggling different sort of other context that reinforces uh, what you're presenting through overlays and other animations and stuff. That becomes a pretty interesting uh that's an interesting platform to perform with. And yeah, so looking for another camera is a big deal. Even if you like your, your, your streaming, uh, um, your, your current webcam, I use the, my external cam is some, uh, I forget what Logitech it is, but it, it does a 1080p, um, capture, you know, um, it's better. It's somewhere in an acceptable range. Right. But it still would be nice to have all multiple angles and all that. Um, so I found the Epic Cam by Canoni. Uh, there are a few other dedicated apps, like something about OBS Cam and whatever. But I found the pricing and the – because you could do – they have like a free version that lets you test it out and whatnot, which is nice. Um, but then I ended up buying the the Epic Cam Pro, I think it's called, or Epic Cam HD in um, the iTunes App Store. But it also does support – Android, so it's cross-platform. It can, yeah. it can send a you know the the image from a uh, the the cell phone camera to either Mac or Windows via either iOS or Android. So hmm. pretty flexible. Very cool. Yeah, and uh, and I had it sort of set up where I was going to demo it, but it it's it um, as I as I encountered. I, I was working to get all set up on my Mac, and this things don't quite perform as well. The recordings, when I record, I, I was unable to really get uh, like great frame rate and matched audio with the frames and whatnot. Yeah, that was that's just not going to work, right? So um, I've, I did get fully set up on my PC after that. Which I just have a, a an old Windows Surface three tablet, and um, surprised that I mean it's not. I think the the specs on it are not as high as as my MacBook Pro, but mm. it everything performs a bit better. What are you streaming off of right now? Uh, my uh, MacBook Pro. Okay, because yeah, there's there's been on and off throughout this this talk. There's been a little bit of like syncing issues with the video. Which is fascinating. That is just fascinating that it would be so so different on a higher end machine. Yeah, my wish list. My wish list for um, what I would like to do with the platforms I have is is a lot longer than what I'm able to do right now, um, because I would also like to. Uh, so on the Mac, you can really easily capture sort of um, like an iPad or an iPhone screen, and that's easy to to, to switch in. On the PC, that requires buying some software and, and and it sort of does a workaround through airplay right so you're sort of okay. an airplay is apple's way of like sending your you know something from your phone to a tv or your ipad to a tv what have you <laughs> anyway um puzzles all over the place trade-offs on both platforms because that's i guess that's a that's a thumbs up for the mac where getting you know do, doing a drawing show from your ipad um you you know being able to switch and integrate different elements with OBS, it's pretty straightforward and uh, mm -hmm. very promising. Um, wow, wow, and I I don't remember where I was going to go with that now. So well, you're oh, about so, things so, I discovered along the way, and yeah. So uh, yeah, another example to back up back up what you're talking about is I was thinking about how um, I think it was last week 
my buddy Steve Hammaker was doing a uh, virtual talk slash signing. Like he was doing a signing in conjunction with a comic store. And he did this really cool setup where cool. he had uh, the webcam on him and then he had a camera pointing down at the books while he was signing. So it was as close to standing in front of the table talking to him as you're going to get. Um, but he did just actually two webcams. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize OBS could handle taking two inputs that way. Um, because I know that like both Mac and PC, it, it's not the friendliest with like sharing your camera between applications, right? Um, mm -hmm. So... So anyway, yes, you could, if you wanted to, instead of doing like a workaround, like if you don't want to spend $20 on an iOS app for a, for your old phone, although I love the idea of keeping my old phones that in circulation, you know, as long mm -hmm. as I can get, twist every last little bit of value out of this $900 <laughs> piece of glass that I carried around for years. <laughs> uh, yeah, gosh, they, they are a big investment. Um, um. And, and time, yeah, it yeah. feels like it's a bummer. Forced obsolescence is a bummer, and I, I, I find it. Yeah, it's it's really hard to hard to swallow that. Um, so yeah, I mean that's one of the reasons I, I, I bought this Surface Three, thinking I was not going to go with an iPad Pro, but then I ended up getting an iPad Pro, you know, like a year later or so. Yeah. And uh, because at the time, I mean, so like Microsoft has has. Um, has evolved a lot as a company. Um, they went to a place where I don't think they were making stuff for me after mm -hmm. they were making stuff for me, but then they came back and I know, I think they're making stuff for me again. So yeah, isn't that funny? Yeah. That is really funny. Yeah. Cause I, I, I remember this goes way back to the art and story days, but this is like when the iPhone first came out, what 2007. And I remember mm -hmm. saying on the show, the moment they turned this thing into a tablet that you can draw on game over. They own they own all arts, and you have to remember the context. Up until this point, Macintosh was the place where artists went. You, if you were an artist, you had a Mac. You didn't have a PC because the, 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 there wasn't as much um, support hardware or software for. Well, there was, but it wasn't as nice of an experience anyway. The assumption was that the Macs were where artists went, and I remember catching a lot of heat at that time. Like people were like they're never going to do it. They're never going to. Why would you do that when you have netbooks? Like people getting like very angry with me. I'm like, whoa, hey, I'm sorry. I just said that. Like <laughs> if this happens, it'd be great. I'm really attached to my choices. I want to vent at that. <laughs> At your choice. At your choice, which wasn't even a choice. It was just like a, it was like a sort of a, a supposition. Like if this happens, that would be game over. <laughs> and then like the iPad came out, and then they were like, "Why would you want to use a pencil?" I'm like, "Oh, oh, I'm very disappointed in what you just said." <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, Windows comes out. It's like, oh, hey, you like using pens? Yeah. yeah do you want to use a pen on our thing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I have, uh, yeah, it's, it, I don't know. We, we don't do a ton of tech show talk. I, no, we don't. I had a tablet PC in 2004. Um, Which was the mod book? No, 2004. Oh, so oh wow. Exactly. Think of that time travel. Um, so, that was a Fujitsu Lifebook 4010 something, something, whatever. And it was, um, I mean, I, I think I, let's, I drew, um, it must have been early 2004, if not 2003, because I, I, I remember I drew invitations to my wedding on it, right? Stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I was using it for game development and all. It was, it was a great device. It still actually runs, and right now it's running Ubuntu, some ancient build of Ubuntu. Um, but uh, yeah, so a huge fan of that, and it was it's tough to see when companies um, adopt rhetoric that it just sort of there's just so it's, it doesn't check out. It does it, it's it's like to even listen to them, it's to experience cognitive dissonance where yeah, nobody yeah. wants to use a pencil. Okay, <laughs> that's not true. Um, we're humans. We use tools in our hands that overall, right? So right. not to be ableist or what have you, but like that's, that's a common human pattern to at mm -hmm. least physically and or conceptually use tools, please. You know, this, this marketing baloney. Yeah. Um, anyway, but they've gone back and forth and I did eventually like I, I had my cake and I ate it too because I had a Mac portable Mac with, uh, a, a, a screen interface that you, that had a, um, a pen digitizer in it. And it was touch sensitive and it was awesome. That was the mod book. Yeah. <sighs> and um, 
you know, but uh, things change, right? The, 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 the operating system keeps evolving. And if you want to stay up to date, so eventually the mod book just became long in the tooth. Mm-hmm. And, um, so yeah, that's, it's, it's a really, it's a, it's a hard puzzle. I don't know where I was going with that other than just jumping on the train of doing a little tech talk. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was fun. Talking about, uh, <laughs> let's talk about big companies and their choices. I'm, st- I'm still, I just, I just feel like I, I remember that the, 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 the iPad pro was an obvious thing in 2007. It felt like it's the natural next step. And the fact that it took so long to get there, I just, I'm still feeling a little bit burned by that, you know? Um, yeah, anyway, same here. Or it's got to, eventually it has to merge with their main OS at some point. Yeah. Johnny Ive is no longer there. The mm-hmm. butterfly keyboard was a mistake, um, et cetera. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's one of those things like, cause that's, that's the MacBook pro era Mac I have too, is mm. I, you know, I got one of those, this, this thing is, um, it'll be, I can't believe this. It's five years old. No, four, this is four or five years old. This MacBook pro time flies. Wow. And, um, and, and yeah, and I, I have never gone on a podcast. I don't think and talk, talked about it because boy, that's been done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and anyway, yeah, but it yeah. was tough. It's tough when, you know, so you're, you know, trying to puzzle a new creative project and trying to enlist the tools you have and find a good fit of that gets you at least, you know, close to the goals you have in mind and, um, and all that. So, yep, that's okay. Then one more goal I had, I had in mind mm-hmm. is to turn all this knowledge and do the best I can as far as whatever things I can learn and have run well in OBS. And then I want that to be how I show up on virtu- on, on, as a, as a participant in any call. Yeah. Any yeah. platform. Wouldn't that be great? How do you do that? So <laughs> if you have a Mac, you basically, uh, first you put it under your, your, you, if you have a car, you put it under the, the tire, the rear tire, you back over the Mac, you then bury the Mac <laughs> and hope it comes back <laughs> to you, okay. but still friendly, right? And, uh, <laughs> not murdery. Anyway, no, you actually don't do, do some pet cemetery thing with your Mac. You, um, you, you basically uh, add a kernel extension, and I was like, you know, I just did hard stop. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing the, a kernel extension from an unsigned, you know, could be a great, honest, awesome person. I don't know them personally. I'm not going to, like, that's just too far. My Mac is my secure platform, and I, I can't do that. I won't, I won't do that. I choose not to. So, but on Windows... What do you do, Jersey? Well, I actually just go to Google and do a search for OBS Virtual Cam plugin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then okay. I download it. <laughs> it's just a plugin and it works. It's already there and it's. it's <laughs> now, what does this do and why is that cool? Because I think this is the moment you suggested the use case. I was like, oh my gosh, that seems so natural, so obvious. And I can't believe I didn't think of it. What I'm hoping to do is some, well, I want to work on this kind of thing with you with Lean Into Art is like some of our shows, we do a lot more uh, visual things, but what if somehow, um, I don't know how we could pull this off, but what if, imagine a world where we are both uh, showing up to the video stream as OBS uh, virtual cams, where we're feeding in whatever presentation materials we want. A, and our drawing app, right? And for me, I would I would hook up, I would I would get one of my drawing tablets, you know, into the, you know, drawing have an app, be able to switch to it easily, using up deck, boop 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 boop. Hey, it's me on camera. Boop. Oh, it's my slides. Boop. Oh, it's my I'm my drawing app. Check it out. Boop boop boop. I'm switching, and it's easy peasy. And maybe I have I'm like I have other effects or things I want to do. Boop. No problem, because I'm in the meeting as the OBS like, as OBS. So right? for, for, for those who haven't picked up on what we're talking about yet, 
what we're saying is it's a plugin that you put in OBS and then it, it turns, you can export whatever you're streaming in your OBS as a camera source to whatever virtual meeting app you're using. So if you're using Google Meet, if you're using Skype, if you're using Zoom, then you can pump in basically what you would normally pump into a YouTube live or Twitch live stream, all the stuff that we've been doing with like the scene switching, app app capturing, like like where I was saying, like I can have Clip Studio Paint open, I could be drawing Clip Studio Paint, just switch to it. I don't have to like go to like some clumsy interface, go like, okay, now share my screen. What screen? This screen? Yes, well, that screen. And you can integrate the, the elements, right? So yes, yep. you could have a hybrid that's both your inset or um, picture in picture camera with yep. your drawing app yep. and uh, just any any mix of those things that's a really powerful uh, to me a very desirable t uh, tool to yeah. say I can show up at any virtual event with my kit of uh, uh, really well set up OBS to be able to do um, well interesting and engaging performance whether you know, it's live or recorded. We talked a few episodes ago about doing virtual events. I'm trying to stay away from that word virtual because it occurred to me recently that virtual also means almost. <laughs> it's like, oh, I know I mean, that, that that stigma isn't like super apparent and I, I don't want to get too much of it to be like a, a prickly pear about this, but you know, maybe online events. Um, but like hmm. we talked about doing that uh, online events and one of the, the, the puzzles to solve is how do you do commerce? How do you do, uh, you know, ways to make people aware of how they can engage and trade with you. And it seems to me that showing up with that in your back pocket is also like showing up with like your convention table in your back pocket, right? Like it's just there in case you need, it doesn't have to be there. But like all of a sudden it's like somebody says, well, what do you do? Everything just folds out. Oh. It's like, here's a, yeah. Watch, yeah, exactly. He, um, you could have pre-canned like, you know, a five second clip of 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 some app you made or yeah. Like your your store page, or yeah, or in some, the case of in my case of as a teaching artist, I could have a clip of me in one of my school assemblies with 500 kids screaming while I'm drawing, like just loaded ugh. up, ready to go, right? That something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and it's no the, think about the like there's no extra hoops or whatever. Think about every time we've had to switch to oh, hold on, let me go into my you know yeah. okay, I've got to click on and share my desktop, and it, the awkward. Entry and exit of that mode. Where's the button? I oh, these apps. I that's, tell you, I feel like that's the more up to date and mid tw mid twenty twenty uh, version of the joke about the person who doesn't know how to use the webcam and you see like their chin in the camera and like where where do I look? You know, I feel like that joke that joke is reaching the end of its life cycle and the new version is okay. What do I click? Where's the icon for screen share? Okay, it's gonna take okay. a second to load and yeah. Oh, I gotta, yeah. I gotta pull up my my PowerPoint now. And oh uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't want this app. This oh nope, that's my other monitor. Yeah, that's the that's that joke uh, now. <laughs> oh my gosh. So uh, yeah, yeah I mean here. that that's the that's the goal. Um, mm -hmm. so you you sound pretty pretty stoked about that too. That's, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I mean I think it's it's something where um OBS does. You could do a search for this on YouTube. Uh, OBS scene selections. And you can actually create sort of preloaded and you can export them so you can take them across instances of OBS where basically if you set all that stuff up, you, I could have like a meeting scene selection, Jersey's meetings, and it would have all those things preloaded. And then when I have my podcast, like I have a lean into art scene selection, which just loads up all the lean into art uh, scene instances of like different setups, like the two up that we're looking at right now, you know, when I switch to looking at Chrome and so on. So it seems like it, yeah, that would be a very, it would be a very powerful tool to have in my back pocket that I would probably use 30% of the time, but when I use it that 30% of the time, it would be very impactful, you know? Um, and it, it's, it's something, I mean, I, this is where I think this is actually of interest to other um, cartoonists, artists, visual storytellers, teaching artists, and developers, is I'm discovering that even though the whole world is suddenly now very, very familiar and, and fluent in video conferencing, not everybody's really fluent in anything more than opening up their laptop and talking into their uh, laptop microphone, right? And this is something that I think is a bit of a, a professional development that I think a lot of artists need to do is that when I show up, so like I have this mic hooked up to my computer whenever I do video conferencing, just for the, it started out as just, it's just easier just to have it set up that way because I do all that audio routing to do the show. 
So I show mm-hmm. these Zoom meetings, and then everybody's talking, and then suddenly I'll go, well, I have a thought on that. And everybody's like, whoa, what happened? His audio is incredible. You know, and I'm like, well, that wasn't the point, but <laughs> but, but suddenly I made this very memorable, you know, it's like, and then everybody makes a joke, like, it's 75 and sunny outside in downtown California, you know, but, but which isn't the point. It, it makes a funny moment and everything, but just investing a little bit in, I hate to say it, production value when you're going to these meetings, I think also makes a bit of a, a difference. And it, at least I've noticed it's making an impact um, in terms of people noticing who should, you, you seem to show up more prepared somehow, you know? Although there's lots of jokes about like, at the end of the meeting, they're like, oh, I was on the Jersey show. I'm like, okay, yeah, well, yes, I have, I have a nice microphone because I do a thing with the microphone all the time. You know, this isn't me like trying to like, like with my peacock feathers behind me. It's just, it's, it's actually easier than using my desktop sure. mic. You're like production shaming everybody. Oh, you don't have a Shure SM58? Well, yes, oh, that's, yes. that sounds just you like me. You can't get in on your microphone like this. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> it's, it, it is like, it's, it's tough. Yeah, because you, yeah, you're the nerd. Fine. You, we're fine. <laughs> I, you, you know what? I'm going to be the video conference nerd. So what? Um, yeah. Got, I have a mic that's that, that may be uh, allowing a little higher quality audio capture. I have, um, you know, whatever, a setup that, that, that yes, I'm in an actual room that I, I'm lucky I can do that where, where I, it's, it, this is a background that I was actually in a meeting where we were, where we were talking about like uh, that, a little bit of the production mm, differences, right? That, that some, a lot of folks were showing up to virtual events, um, just, wherever like sitting on their patio and there's car noise and stuff right <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorites is, is the person who's in a recliner and the laptop is like sitting on their belly and you're just looking straight up their face like that kind of thing right or it's like okay <laughs> it's cool that we are in this this situation where we can like show up to things in our pajamas i celebrate it too you know i'm showing yeah. up in pajamas to things that's really cool but it's like mm-hmm. also it's like i don't want to look up your nose bro <laughs> exactly well and especially okay if, if you're, if what I'm saying is, is like, I guess come as you are, if you're, if you're attending, but if you're presenting, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. trying to yeah. say. It's like, okay, yeah. if you're presenting, um, it's possible to gear up a little bit with yeah. free and open source things. Yeah. And I, I think there's no shame in, in being a nerd about that and trying to see what can work well for you and your setup and caring about that, um, that, that you're there taking up people's time and tension, and that's a scarce resource. And why not honor that by considering your presentation? That last minute of audio is the most important minute of audio in this episode. You can skip over virtually everything I said. Take that, bottle it. That is the point. Yes, that's awesome, Rob. Thank you. Um, do we? Are we at the point where we can switch to uh, two minute practice? Oh, I think we are. Okay, this is great. a great time. Okay. So, um, you know, that, 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 that's the, the summary, or rather that's where we are right now with our exploration of OBS. We're going to continue to keep playing with it. And when we have things that we discover or are excited about that we can turn into an hour's worth of discussion, we will bring it to back to the show. We would love to hear from you about what resources, what plugins, what uh, affordances and, um, you know, techniques that you have heard about or discovered or played with on your own. Um, because yeah, we're relatively speaking fairly new to this software and we're, 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 we're learning a lot, but you know, like I would love thoughtful comments and in in comments and questions and, uh, tips, recommendations, what have you, this is a, this is a time to really just absorb. And I know others have, have been studying and working on this a lot for a long time. And, uh, if you, if you have thoughts you care to share, it'd be awesome. I know we have a lot, like speaking as a teaching artist, this is something I'm thinking about because I'm going to be doing a lot more of this with my, I'm I'm going to be doing a lot of of video teaching down the road. So any thoughts that you teaching artists have out there about the ways that you've thought about it or employed it, I would love to hear that too. So, okay. In about a minute and a half, we are going to, about two minutes, we're going to come back and talk about um, the two minute practice for this week. But first we have to thank some more people who make this show possible. And those people are us. We make the show possible. We make lots of things. We think hard about the things we make. And then we bring all the hard thinking into this project we call Lean Into Art. The thing that I make that I think really hard about 
that I hope you will enjoy is a project called Four Million Years Later. What? Is this a paleontology project? No, it is a podcast <laughs> about the the Transformers who Generation One cartoon in which the the, the 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 beginning of the series starts with the Transformers crash landing on Earth four million years ago and waking up in 1984. And it's me and an old friend of mine uh, who grew up with the show. We loved the show since since we were children, never fell out of love with it, and spent the last 25 years talking on the phone about it and finally decided to start capturing some of those conversations. So every week we watch an episode of the show and then we sort of convene in a podcast to talk about what we saw, really keeping an eye on the perspective of how we engage with this as children versus how we engage with this as adults, do a lot of story and character analysis through the show, uh, and really do a lot of um, contextualizing it from the standpoint of this, yes, it is a commercial for toys for children, and yes, it was made by a lot of disparate people with disparate perspectives and motivations, and yet they made something that captured the imagination of it an entire generation of children. So that's worth studying and look at how they did it. That's, that's, the, that's my premise in showing up to the show. Um, so it's a joyful love note to the series, but with a very, very careful analytic eye. The latest episode is episode 22, The Immobilizer, which is one that Hoover and I, my co-host, really loved a lot. And uh, I have a lot of uh, a lot of doing that flip-flopping of looking at it as a child, looking at it as an adult. So um, you can find it at 4 million years later dot com so right. that is seriously one of my favorite podcasts at this point four million years later is such a joy <laughs> to hear like the thoughtful exploration it's not like a um like shovel snark on a thing but it's but it's sincere it's not just like you 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 sit there and, and uh, compliment and go that was awesome when this happened wasn't it yeah man that was awesome oh <laughs> let's say that a lot no there it's so thoughtful and uh, and joyful and um, and and uh, and the, the the exploring like as a storyteller if you care about any kind of storytelling uh, it's just gonna be such an awesome show and that that you should totally listen to while you're doing dishes or whatever your virtual commute is right now or if you have a real commute it's obviously it should be there it's gonna keep you uh, just uh, it's not it's not gonna um, it's not a frustrating show it's a comforting show oh well thanks for that uh, but Rob, you have a, a, a store where I you do. speak, speaking of presentations and workshops and, you know, presenting with video, mm -hmm. let's talk about what we can find at robstenzinger.com slash store.html. Oh, thanks, Jersey. Yeah. So I have a variety of things that I offer, the, the, the games I make, the creative process coaching and online workshops, like you mentioned, and just to, to highlight the, the online workshops, I have, um, uh, currently four that are available both at Gumroad and at Skillshare and they cover a, a, a wide range of of interests uh, but it's it, it, it really is it comes down to like sort of using design to solve different problems let's say you want to to take on a creative challenge and you want to um, find a way for it to fit into your life and also your goals well I have a whole workshop about that called customizing your next creative challenge um, then if you're doing some collaboration and you want to do do that holistically and involve all the different people and backgrounds that are in your um, project, including your audience. Well, you can get into drawing user journey maps to design user experience, gather ideas, and collaborate. If you're doing some goal planning, check out goal setting using design plus storytelling. Or if you're looking for just a, like a fun break, maybe you you alone or for folks that you're you you cohabitate with, um, just join the fun of sketching the happiest kitty in the universe. So there you go. That's some some workshops I offer. And, and you can yeah, find check them it all out at robstenzinger.com slash store.html. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six different categories of things that you can check out, including games, writing, coaching. Or you just click on all topics. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> All right, and then the last thing we hope you'll check out today is the Lean into Art Discord. Yes, Lean into Art has a forum now. And the invite link is in the show notes for this in every episode. And there's three public channels where you can request future topics, talk, comment on past episodes, offer some of your two-minute practices. But there's also three Patreon-only levels uh, or channels where you can hang out with fellow leaners and us and share some of the work that you've been working on. Uh, 
tap into the brain trust, get some insight on the projects that you're struggling with, and then also just like a social channel with, hey, how you doing? And that's the Lean Into Art Discord. I'm sure you can also search for it on Discord with Lean Into Art as the search term. So thanks to everybody who's been hanging out with us there. It's been fun getting to know more of you, uh, you know, get to know of you more as, as people who are interacting with us instead of just listening and watching, right? Mm -hmm. It's really nice. I mean, it's, it's a lower pressure social forum. Yeah. Right. Um, feels it, it's always a little performative and, and a little harder to, to do that on the big platforms like a, like a Twitter or, or Instagram. But, um, but yeah, discord is, has been working out well. So, so time for the two minute practice segment of the show. Hello, Rob. Hey, Jersey. Two minute practices. Two minute practices. This uh, time we had fourteen days instead of seven to work on this oh, one. Oh, and I did so much less. <laughs> no, I did a little bit. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, I mean, my uh, for, kind of, yeah, my my practice. A lot of my practices fell off. A lot of my self care practices fell off the plate this week because it's been it's been a nutty two weeks for me, um, mm -hmm. as it has been for so many people. Right? You know, it's like it's like certainly managing any kind of practice amongst all of like the uncertainty and the st the sheltering in place and learning how to navigate all of the demands that come out of that you know it's like that's worth acknowledging but i did manage to find time for practicing this week what was our practice well our practice was to uh what's the quick way to say it? it's ba basically to to sketch a wrestling pose Two minutes at a time, but with the motivation to uh, to really push the energy and the action, and uh, you can you, obviously you can hack the challenge and, and pick any kind of wrestling pose you want. But then uh, there's a great set of prompts through the Sketchamania event that happened recently, um, and so well, why not take one of those prompts and make that your pose, and then for two minutes at a time. Uh, you know, see what you can do. Develop a develop an illustration. Develop an illustration. Uh, so okay, okay. So I I misread the challenge a little bit. This one was put for put to us by John David Guetta when he was on the show uh, a few a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I thought it was to create a series of loose sketch poses based on the prompts, not a single, because I saw you posted yours, you posted your yep. uh, challenge, and you actually had like various stages of production of two minute intervals to get to yours. You want to share yours first? When we talk about oh, okay, that? yeah, sounds good. Um, in hindsight, what's funny is, is uh, I, looking back at the, what, what should I do with this challenge? I was delayed for, for so long. I actually was influenced by how J John David Guerra took on his challenge, which he'd picked one pose. And I was like, Oh, I saw he posted one, posted one version. He posted another version and he's, he's developing the same illustration. And I thought, okay, you know, it's like he, he seeded this thing. So I'm just going to roll with that approach. Uh, so I, I decided to just off the cuff, um, start with, uh, silhouettes this time. And one of my favorite ways to do silhouette um, the silhouette shapes to try to get some kind of recognizable, interesting form, be able to analyze something that is, that's visual, but not getting caught up into all any other kind of details, even, even bones and, um, the kind of underdrawing that you can do that you know, to do the spine and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'll imply it by just throwing down blob shapes with a um, with a drawing tool and uh, and I like to use this app called Inkpad, um, and, and uh, which I can't remember. Like it, this app was called something else years ago, and then someone else sort of took over the code base and whatever. And and, and I'm so thankful that it's around still. It's one of those things where sometimes apps just disappear, and I like really get attached to you know how some things behave. Where what I have is an instantly filled shape by making just drawing one outline all of a sudden boom shape is filled and mm -hmm. you know could be spiky could be round or blobby could be anything uh and all of a sudden boom 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 like a shape 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 and it starts to form a silhouette really fast and that's where um yeah and so i chose to um i chose the prompt manager and i thought uh, and i was thinking of 
uh, and then I thought of the characters that I've that I've created for some, you know, early development of projects, but also finished projects. And so I ended up picking something that was more familiar to me, the the comic Art Geek Zoo that I made a few years back. And uh, and I thought, who is really a manager there? And there's a couple characters, but one that really stood out that is very pro wrestler wrestlery on its own is Foam Demon. And Foam Demon totally bosses around these these minion type characters, little, little cherub demons. And so I'm like, boom, micromanager, that's it. So <laughs> off I, off I ran, I used my <laughs> timer, which I should post that more broad publicly. Uh, mm-hmm. because I, it's, it's like, I've, I, it stood the test of time. I've got this file that's like two minutes and 10 seconds. And it gives you, um, it gives you a heads up that the timer's about to start, and that's just facilitated, you know, a little bit of background music and then my voice. Uh, just like if we were in a workshop together, and I would say, all right, let's take two minutes and capture some ideas, whatever. Boom, timer. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so you do that, and then so I went through a few, a few stages of development for this. From um, I went from uh, Inkpad to Metabang, and that was a spur-of-the-moment thing because... I don't know the mysteries of the export tool palette, the the share thing that pops up in iOS, because apps populate that for what, mysterious reasons to me, right? Where it's like, oh, do you want this to to send this to messages or to, um, oh, let's say, uh, I'm trying to make up like or or some some app that has like. Nothing to do with this. <laughs> you want to put it, to, send it to your OneDrive. Do you want to send it to Outlook? Do you want to send it to, yeah, you know, like right. Calendar? <laughs> and it puts these apps that are not really in an art workflow at the top of the list priority. But yeah. thankfully, scroll, scroll. Hey, MetaBang, fine. Hmm. That was literally the only drawing app in the list. So I need to figure out how to manage that. So boop, off I go throw it in, it's a layer, and, and I continue developing it through um, basically four practices. Um, and then I ended up pushing the pose. Uh, and the last time, I, I just I did a twist where, I, where I'm like, I'm going to do one more practice, but I'm actually going to use what I've developed so far and go in a different direction. And, and like, what if Foam Demon were different? And can I get energy in that? And, you know, it's only two minutes, so why not? It's, it's not expensive to experiment two minutes mm-hmm. at a time. So that's that. That was that's how that's how I tackled this. And I'm, so I'm hearing that that uh, yours uh, might not have gone. No, I did. I, it's just that I, my intention was to do a different pose per every day for a different prompt. So I take a different word, right? And explore a pose and do it again. Sticky notes because that's my preferred canvas for doing these two minute practices and so i only got awesome. two done but um I'm, I'm happy with them so what i chose to do was when i said wrestling pose when i thought of wrestling pose i thought of take the prompt loosely invent a wrestler and invent their sort of uh the pose they would do in the ring to like either accept their praise or accept their booze another way to think about it is think about the pose that they would do at the end of a street fighter round right like that like based on the prompt and oh. yeah. And, and, and like what I inferred from that prompt as far as like what a wrestler would be. So the first one I did was based on the prompt mask. And I imagined this like thinner wrestler who would be like more of like one of those like acrobatic style wrestlers, right? He's not, he's not a, he's not a bruiser. He's going to jump all around the ring all the time and dodge the big guy. Uh, and when I said, I said mask, okay, well, I'm immediately think of like a, Zorro, like a domino mask, like Logan Ranger or like a Zorro mask. I'll combine it into like this weird cowboy Zorro guy who knows he's very, uh, lithe and beautiful and poses in a way sort of like, well, I think of Vega from street fighter. Again, oh my right? gosh. I'm like, like Vega the, is just jumping out in my head the yeah. entire time you're describing this character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is I'm very so that's evocative, and uh, yeah, it's totally building off of a kind of a a strong concept form, right? 
Yeah, hmm. yeah, just like, just brainstorming concepts along with the pose. And so then the next prompt I chose was king. And king, I thought, okay, well, kings, um, they typically are heels in wrestling. Like, and I think of like like Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man, or the, there was an actual king. Jerry Lawler, I think, was like uh, the king of, of WWF or something like that. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, what if he was a king, but like he was very, very sensitive. And so when he comes to the ring, he does like big demonstrative tantrums while the crowd is booing him. And so I came up with like, like the, the, the crying <laughs> king wrestler. Oh. Yeah. And, and so what, yeah. you're, you're developing that single image in two minutes. Well, I mean, it's wow. pretty loose. It's just like, it's, it's very still my gosh, dude. So it's, it is loose, but it's, it's great. Like, so I see an underdrawing in what, what's a, is that like the side of a pencil? Yeah, yeah. Or, so I'm just using uh, a, a mechanical blue line pencil, and then I go. Mm-hmm. I went quickly, very quickly, with uh, just like a, a a micron to do the outline, and then I just took a Palomino black wing and just very quickly sh- shaded in to give it more of a finished look. Even though you know, it's like it's if you look close, dude, wow. it's not finished. But oh, it's sure. I understand it's not yeah. rendered, and like you, you would ship this in your you know gallery. <laughs> yearly gallery of of your works but like I, anyway it's impressive that that's a heck of a two-minute practice thanks so. yeah i just wish I could it's have like more at done. least four sta- four stages to that drawing yeah so about 30 In seconds a piece yeah 30 seconds for each mm. stage uh so i i gave myself only a few seconds just to think about the concept before i started you know and i and i did use your timer so i was like okay well king what do i think of kings when i think of heels crying king go you know, and I let the blue line sort of dictate what it's going to be, like the, what the general idea of the, the body language is going to be. So, like, it looked like pro wrestling, um, like He Man body build Kool Aid yeah. Man, <laughs> yeah, with fi- with this fire. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Because I was that also was, trying to think of like monsters, like for like Nightmare Pro Wrestling kind of thing. So like he's got like a volcano. His crown is also a volcano or something like that, yeah. right? So <laughs> anyway. But so I, it was a fun challenge. I wish I could have done it more um, or challenge practice. It was a fun practice. I keep saying challenge. It's such a habit for me. It was practice. Uh, w- speaking of which, yeah. what I do we want? Those. What do we want to practice next? Okay. So we've, uh, we have a tendency to go toward the illustration stuff. Um, what is something that you could use a little more of or a little less of? Is, is there sort of a self-care thing, a business thing? It's definitely self-care fell off of my plate this last couple of weeks. Like it was something where I, I did not take care of myself very well. Um, and I didn't, I didn't provide myself the space to really like collect myself. Uh, and you know, I, I caught, so typically I do my, my self check-in every Sunday. I didn't do it this week and I barely did it last week. I don't know. What does a two minute self check-in look like? Right. A check-in. Is it, I, yeah, I don't, is that could take a, a few forms because I think intellectually it could be just capture words out of your head, just feeling, you know, like list feeling words, urgent ideas, something like that. So just Mm -hmm. do, um, um, essentially you're facilitating yourself to, to unpack like be on your mind. And it could be the whole thing of like what you start with is, is like, I don't know, the, you know, clean the kitchen and, and, you know, gosh, we're out of onions again. And oh, then all of a sudden it, it, it can go through from that to, um, let's see. Um, uh, I, I knew, like, mm, I, uh, is it a brainstorm? Is it a self care brainstorm? Is that what it is? I don't know. Maybe. Cause it could, you know, cause you could urgently capture a to do list. That's one way this could end up, but like thinking about what might be stuck. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I like to think if I were to do it, I would do it in a more broader sense. I would do it as like, okay, what's, what's the word cloud that's in my head this morning? Just capture, capture my brain's word cloud this morning. And without the express, 
it, it, without the express intent of like capturing a to-do list because that's a more, I, like you said, it's more urgent activity. It's like, okay, well, let's just take stock of what my brain is doing right now. You know, um, I, I have a certain kind of stress nightmare that I have whenever I'm stressed out that like it, it's like mm. sort of like if I'm not listening to my body enough, my brain will suddenly give me like three of them in a row like this. You're panicked about something. <laughs> and mm. here's this this recurring nightmare that happens that if if I were to describe it in words, you would be like, what does that got to do with what you're stressed out about? Nothing. But it's just like some kind of like like so archetypal thing that my brain goes to to like send a signal to my conscious mind. Hey, you're really worried about something right now. Um, so I like the idea of thinking about it more in that way. Like what are things that you're concerned about lately? What are things that you're, that are you, you catch yourself thinking about throughout the day. Let's take stock of that for two minutes without the intent of, of doing anything with it. Okay. So, cause yeah, yeah. It's like a, the, it, the idea is to just get it out. Mm -hmm. So, so get the word cloud out of your head onto a page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is that, All right. Is that too abstract? Is that too weird? It's let's, so trying to think, uh, let, let's, well, let's see. That's a good question. Um, I, the abstract can be great. Prompts are just seeds to react to. Right. Okay. But then there could be maybe, um, let's just hear it here. Let's play it back to, okay. to, to see if we, Let's see if we got this. Yeah. Um, so capture a word cloud. And the theme of that is what? Um, th th things that you're thinking about today, tomorrow, next week, whenever. Um, so it's just what's on your mind. What's on your mind? What's on your mind for two okay. minutes? And but it doesn't have to be sentences. It could just be words. It could be words. It could be sentence yep. fragments. Mm. And now I have information society in my head. <laughs> Pure energy. I want to know what you're thinking, Jersey. <laughs> well, no, you don't I, have to share it though. You, you don't have it. to share. It's your thing. It's yeah. Yeah, that's part of the point of the practice. Okay, that'll be a fun one to practice. That, at least I, I know why that'll be helpful to me. I anticipate that it'll be helpful to me. Let me put it that way. So, okay, we're off and going. So, thanks, Rob. Thank you, Jersey. All right, so we find ourselves at the end of another episode of the Lean Into Art Cast. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm super curious about what everybody's going to be sending us with regard to OBS stuff and live streaming stuff. Um, uh, totally. And, and I mean, and, and if you're curious too, um, if you do the, if you listen to this in audio, why not see what, uh, what we're doing so far, check out the Twitch stream and, mm -hmm. and see, see what's up there. Uh, of course you can visit the, uh, the visit the lean into art.com and you'll get the YouTube video there as well. Um, mm -hmm. non subtle agenda is, Hey, visit us on Twitch. <laughs> uh, but you see what it's like. And if you have reactions to, it, if you're like, well, I don't know, that's, this interesting setup and, and, Oh, here's how I tackle that issue and whatnot. It's, it's be, be great to hear from you. Okay. Well, yeah. And so that is to say that we record the show weekly on Thursdays at noon, Eastern time, 11 a.m. Central. We stream it live on twitch.tv slash lean into art. And then we collect it as a podcast at patreon.com slash lean into art and lean into art.com. Until next time I have been Jersey Drozd of lean into art.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger, also of leanintoart.com. And I'm Rob Stenzinger, places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart. And you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.